A 20 gram ball of clay traveling east at 3 meters per second collides with a 30 gram ball of clay traveling north at 2 meters per second. What is the movement direction of the resulting 50 gram blob of clay? And what is the speed of the resulting 50 gram blob of clay? So let's go ahead and draw a little picture here. So we have our first ball of clay traveling east. And they say it's traveling east at 3 meters per second. Then we have a second blob of clay traveling north, and that is traveling north at two meters per second. Okay, so before we even write anything else down or do any math or anything like that, let's just think about this conceptually. If these two collide right here, we can figure out, and, or just assume rather, that they are going to go off in some sort of direction like this. So now, you, if you also remember when we talked about vectors in the past, vectors can be slid around. So we can take this vector for the blob of clay that's traveling east, and we can slide it or redraw it right here. And then we can take the one traveling north, and we can slide that up right here. So basically what we did is we know that the resultant vector is going to be right here, this guy. And so we basically just took that vector and slid its x and y components, or broke it up into its x and y components, which is essentially what they're giving us to start with. But we have to deal with momentum here. So let's go ahead and do all of the x momentum to solve for whatever this velocity is right here. And then we'll do all of the, the conservation of momentum to figure out what this speed is right there. The reason we have to do this is we have to take into account the different masses and the mass of the ball after it collides. So what we're going to have is we'll have m1v1 plus m2v2 equals m3v3. And we want to know what this v3 part is right here. So like I said, let's do the x component first. Or it is the east west component. Okay, so the first one we have in kilograms we have 0 0.02 times its speed, which she said was 3 meters per second. And now if you notice the second ball clay, it doesn't have any east, west, or x components. It's only north, south. So we could go ahead and add this in, but we know right away it's going to be zero. And then that's going to equal m3 v3. But we want v3, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide over m3. So if we divide that over, the total mass of the whole resulting m3 is going to be 50 grams, or 0 0.05 kilograms. So if we do that math, the top part gives us 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.05, and we are left with 1.2 meters per second. Okay, so now let's do the y part. So for the y part, it's going to be the same thing. The first one right here, it doesn't have any north-south components. It's only going to be east-west. So that we'll have 0 for m1v1 plus m2 we said is 30 grams. Oops. So we have 0 0.03 kilograms times its speed of 2 meters per second and that is equal to m3 v3, but in the same thing we're going to divide by m3, and then we'll divide by m3, which is 50 grams, so we'll have 0 0.05 kilograms. Okay, so now if you look at this, this is the exact same thing. 
So that gives us 0 0.06 on the top divided by 0 0.05 on the bottom. So that Y component is also 1.2 meters per second. So let's redraw this triangle. So we know that it's going to go off in some sort of direction like this. And we just figured out that the X component velocity after it collides will be 1.2 meters per second and the Y component velocity after it collides will also be 1.2 meters per second. Now looking at this using some of the math that we've learned in the past we know that this angle theta right here if the two legs of a right triangle are the same theta has to equal 45 degrees. Now if you want to do the trigonometry, we can do that to prove it, it just in case you get worried on a test. So we want to find tangent of theta. And why are we going to use tangent? Because we're given the opposite in relationship to the angle. We have the opposite and we also have the adjacent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent which is 1.2 divided by 1.2. But 1.2 over 1.2 is going to be 1. So we have tangent theta equals 1. And then we want to move this tangent over to the other side. So theta will equal inverse tangent of 1. So when we do that, inverse tangent of 1 gives us 45. So theta, just as we said, is 45 degrees. Now we want to know what the speed is as well. So we want to know what this hypotenuse is right here, this guy. So we can use Pythagorean's theorem. We have the two legs, which will be a squared, and the second leg, which will be b squared, equals c squared. So we have 1.2 squared plus 1.2 squared equals c squared, and, but we just want c, so let's square root both sides. So we have c, or the hypotenuse, is equal to the square root of 2 times 1.2 squared. So let's go ahead and grab our calculator and do that. So we have the square root of 2 times parentheses 1.2 squared. And that gives us final speed of 1.697 meters per second.